Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I want to share with you a little different perspective on what's going on in Israel and Gaza. Um, the reason I'm able to do that is I've known people that live in Israel for a long time, like 40 years. Um, in Israel and in Gaza, there are not only uh, Jews and Palestinians who are mostly Muslims, there are also Christians who used to be Jews and Christians who used to be Arab Muslims. And that's because there are Christians over there sharing true witness of Jesus Christ for a long time in their life. There are Christian missionaries who have won Palestinians over to faith in Jesus Christ by loving them and by being sincere and be, by being authentic. In war-torn Gaza and war-torn Israel, there are Christians on both sides and they actually love their neighbors, some of whom are Christians and many of whom are not, because they've been praying for them for years. Not only are there Jews and many uh, Muslims being killed and injured in this conflict, but there are Christians also. And these people that I know care about all sides in the conflict so much that they weep, they mourn, but they do not lose their hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. One man, Johanna Catanacho, who's the academic dean at Bethlehem Bible College. He's also an on-call pastor at Nazareth Baptist Church. He said this, our tears are the bridge between brutality and humanity. He described himself as an Arab Christian. You probably didn't know there were any in Israel. And he said, pray with tears in regard to the Gaza-Israel conflict. And he's challenging Christians to pray that all people might stop attacking each other, might listen to the good news of Jesus Christ, and they might all be saved. That's the only way, hear me, the only way to have peace in the world, and especially in Israel, is through faith and obedience. The latest clashes between Israel and Hamas in the last six weeks have seen over 2,000 killed and over 10,000 people injured. That is horrible. But as these attacks continue, Christians who are on both sides of this conflict are praying for peace. Now there's two kinds of peace. One kind of peace is the peace that political leaders promise, which they continue to break and break and break. They use it to try to get ready for the next attack on each other. There's a different kind of peace. It's the kind of peace you can have between you and God. Whether you lived in Israel or Gaza or the United States, there's a lack of peace. We got problems going on in the world all around us. I submit to you this, the only way you can know true peace in your personal life is through faith in Jesus Christ. Then, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what's going on in the world, and I know it upsets you, it upsets me what's going on. The only way you can have true abiding peace in your heart is through faith in Jesus Christ. Then, yes, am I concerned about what's going on around us? Absolutely. Am I concerned about what's going on around the world? Of course I am. But I know that no matter what's happening, I still have peace within myself because of my relationship with God. The question that I would submit to you is, do you have faith in Jesus Christ? I know those who are in conflict must have faith. I don't know how they can live otherwise. Prayer is also invaluable in times like these, both here in our valley and around the world. Everybody needs prayer, and they all need to have a relationship with God through faith. You can replace worry with prayer. You can replace anxiety with gratitude to God. You can experience the peace of God that passes understanding. It will control your emotions and cause you not to be stressed out, have anxiety attacks. And it can control your thoughts. It can help you to keep the, the center of your life in Christ and not just on what your circumstances today. <clears throat> 
the leader of the Baptist church in Gaza. Did you know there was a Baptist church in Gaza? He said, we have peace in our hearts. Did you know that on the roof of one of their buildings, two children were killed by an Israeli rocket? It was not a, intentional. Sometimes these things happen in war. And two children were killed, but they said, we still have peace in our hearts. That requires great faith. This man, Catanacho, this pastor, said he learned that when rockets were striking close to the building where one of his friends, a lady, lived, he phoned her and he asked if there was an area where she could seek refuge. Listen to what she said. She started chuckling and she said, the only refuge she has is God and he is enough for her. Do you have that kind of a refuge in your own life? I think with the way things are going in the world and in our community, you need to have a relationship with God or you won't have any peace at all, okay? If you don't have a church family, I invite you to come check us out. If you do, make sure you go to church on a regular basis and pray. Pray for yourself, pray for your family and your friends, but pray for especially the people who do not know the Lord because they'll never find peace in this world without Him. I love you. God bless you.